my name is Annalisa. Welcome to the channel. Today I'm going to be uh, drawing a fairy. And uh, it's going to be a little bit different from the art videos I've been doing lately, because lately I've been doing a bunch of bookmarks. And this one is, as you can see, a full size or uh, letter sized um, illustration. So let's get going. First of all, I'll tell you a little bit about my inspiration for this piece. It was kind of funny because usually I don't really get an idea of what I really want to draw until I'm sitting in front of the paper. But this one just sort of, a vague image for it anyway, just sort of appeared in my mind. The only thing that kind of prompted it was that I wanted to do a full-size illustration as opposed to another bookmark to have a little bit of uh, variety. And so uh, that, and so in my mind I just got this image of what would I like to draw? I'd like to draw a fairy. But I don't want it to be just a regular fairy like the kind I usually draw with normal sized wings. I want it to be the one with massive oversized wings. Uh, and I want her to be kind of a little thing in the corner that is just dwarfed by these big huge wings. And I want it to be all ethereal and kind of see through -y and have a background not be a real place but kind of just be colors and lights and <laughs> stuff like that. And so uh, from there I uh, I had her pose immediately in my mind but I just kind of had to figure out how to show that on paper. So you can see right now I'm working with this little figurine I have that just happened to be holding her arms in a way that was pretty much what I wanted my uh, drawing to be holding her arms and because it was a figurine I was able to turn her <laughs> so that she was facing the same way I wanted mine to be and see how that would look and use that as a reference. <laughs> so that was really good that I happened to have that on hand. Uh, you can see I've gathered a few of my little fairy um, figurines for this video because I have a lot of them and they're very inspiring. I like to have them around because I really love the way fairies look. I just, I just love them so much, so I collect fairy figurines of many different kinds. As you can see, I've got three very different little fairies here. In the last video, I kind of started, and I was quite a ways into the bookmark illustrations because I wanted to put a little video. I started recording when I was already a fair ways in, but with this one, I wanted to figure out very generally what I wanted to do, but I also wanted to show you how I go from uh, outline of a figure to a fully formed one because I'm always really interested in how other people do that because I want to get better at it. So I thought it might be helpful to anybody who wants to know how I do that to see me do it with people in different uh, positions. Like I showed you how I did it with my main character that I drew a while ago when she was doing a pert wheel. And so I just wanted to show again that kind of thing and how it changes very much and how it's helpful to have a base that you're working from and that can help you um, make it easier than going straight from blank paper to a close to finished uh, illustration or outline for an illustration. And I also wanted to show um, my struggles because I did struggle quite a bit with figuring out her arm positions and figuring out whether I wanted her to be completely like perpendicular to the perspective, whether I wanted it to be straight on from the side, or whether I wanted her to be burned slightly so that you could see part of her abdomen and you could see both arms. But I decided in the end that I wanted her to be very much straight on from the side and so I had to struggle quite a bit to figure out what that would look like uh, and so I just wanted to show me doing that because like I feel like I'm encouraging to see other artists uh, having a difficult time putting what's in their mind on paper because it, and then it makes when I see other people <laughs> struggling, it makes me feel better about myself struggling. So, like, if anybody else out there wants to 
take encouragement from that, feel free. Uh, also, just to let you know, the final product I'm very happy with and I'm really proud of because I stretched myself and I did something I was a little scared of doing because I was kind of scared of drawing fairy wings because in the past I've always had a really great vision and then the, the final product I had never lived up to it and so I've been scared to draw fairy wings for quite a while so I'm proud of myself for doing it and for doing it the best way that I could and for putting in effort and stretching myself. It didn't turn out exactly like my vision did <laughs> but it turned out better than I expected. It turned out closer to my vision and had more like the feeling uh, that I wanted to evoke, it evokes kind of the feeling I wanted, even if it's not as skillfully done as I can see it in my mind. I've read, and this was in reference to writing at the time when I was reading it, it was kind of, I was reading about the craft of writing and how writers feel about themselves and their work and then, and someone was saying how when we're young and inexperienced, but we've read a lot, we have good taste and we can tell what good writing is, but our taste in writing and as I'm talking about now, our taste in art, what we would like to see, what we think is really good, is beyond what we can reproduce. So, like, we have the taste to know that something about our writing isn't right, but we don't have the skill and the experience to fix it. And that can sometimes make us feel really bad about our art or our writing. Um, and so, but the encouraging part is that because we know we have this taste to be able to figure out if something's good or to see and recognize beauty, that means that we will eventually be able to live up to that. Um, because some people don't have that. It's not a bad thing that we have that taste that says we can, that what we're making isn't perfect because that will push us on to eventually make really great stuff. Whereas if we didn't have that taste that tells us what we're doing isn't exactly what we, we wish for, what other people are doing we think is better, that means we're gonna uh, eventually live up to that, hopefully. And um, you have to be aware that your taste is outstripping your ability, and that doesn't mean that what you're making right now is worthwhile, and doesn't mean that you're bad at something. You're early in your journey right now, and that's okay. There's nothing wrong with that, and it just means that uh, you're early on. And when you're when you've been doing it for 10 years, or 20, or 30, or however many years, and you've been drawing, or whatever kind of art you're doing, or writing, then what you're actually creating will start to live up to some of your taste. At least that's what someone was saying that uh, when they had, when they were an early writer, what their taste outstripped their ability. But as they grew and became better, they started to recognize that their writing was more like what they wanted to be putting out, what they had always, always been wanting to put out. But now that they had all this experience, that they were finally starting to be able to do that. And they wished that they had been easier on themselves when they were just starting out so that they wouldn't have felt so bad and they, and they wish they would have known that eventually they will get better. I kind of just wanted to share that idea that even if your work isn't where you want it to be right now, you can, you can be always growing and changing and making your stuff better and make it more what you want it to be. Not necessarily make it like anybody else's if you think that other people are better than you but you can you can make it more you you can make it more what you want to be putting out what you would like to see in the world and so that's my little my little 
uh, chatty, ranty thing about um, based in art. <laughs> Back to what I'm actually drawing here. Um, I got the idea for what position I wanted her wings to be in from a photo I have that I've used for the cover of my short story that is a butterfly a side perspective where she's got her wings, well, I don't know what gender or sex a butterfly is, <laughs> but the little butterfly has the wings sort of mostly open, but is also from the side. So the back wing is sort of laying down, so it looks kind of different from how the wings would be if they were just like folded together, if I'm making any sense at all. So it was kind of a lot of work to figure out how I was gonna bend that wing and make it look right to get that across so I hope that I did I feel like I did I feel really happy with that back wing and especially how I ended up outlining it uh, or going over it in pen after my uh, pencil design I really like my idea that I had to not fill in all the lines and have some of the lines would eventually just be in watercolors so you wouldn't be able to see a defined line, it would just be that that shape would be the shape of the color that I would eventually put on. And I really like how that turned out. Uh, I'm putting kind of a color wash type thing over it, just working in, I wanted to work in multiple colors for the background. I wanted to be bluey, purpley, inky type colors. And then you'll see in a moment. I wanted to have also some yellows and oranges in there, like kind of like lights and things floating. <laughs> so uh, I did that with just little dots of color in like, well, you'll, you can see what I'm doing. Anyway, um, I was wondering whether I should do that and have the background all already be in and then put the wings on, or if I should do the wings separately and not have that other color on there because I was, as I've been working with watercolors I'm learning that it's very difficult to uh, put colors on top of each other when the second color is lighter. When the second color is darker it works really well but when it's lighter it sometimes doesn't show up hardly at all uh, which is different of course from my experience with acrylics which is what I have used in the past mostly. Um, so, but, so I went and looked on YouTube for a tutorial to tell me how to paint translucent things because I really wanted her wings to be translucent uh, because I really like the look of translucent fairy wings and I want it to be very floaty and that kind of thing so and I found a really really good one by uh, somebody who, whose name I can't remember but I will link them below because they did he did such a really good in-depth very clear tutorial on how to do uh, translucent fabrics. He was using acrylics, I think, but a lot of the techniques he was using held true for watercolors. I, I'll link him below because he's really good. And if, if you want to know how to draw or how to, how to paint uh, translucent things, you should definitely check it out because he was like using various light sources and he's having the translucent fabric and over itself and flow over a background that was very detailed and so it's very useful if you want to know how to do that. And so because of that tutorial I decided to put the background on in its complete form and just ignore the wings being there and then wash over where the wings were with a very thin heelish uh, paint. Uh, watercolors and then you could sort of you could see the color being itself but it would you'd also see the background through it and you would see the differences in the background which is another reason I put in the little sun like light things so that when I put on the green for the wings you would be able to see um, you know able to see differences in the background through the wings and that would make it look more translucent. And then also I'm using some glitter markers that uh, you will have seen in my Making Valentine's video. And I use so many colors for this because um, I was just I was just kind of going crazy. I really wanted there to sparkle and I wanted to shine. I wanted to be so pretty and just 
I wanted to kind of go for it in this one because uh, I love drawing fairies and I uh, I love the idea of fairies and I want it to be I want it to be a very a painting that used a lot of light and so sparkles are one way to use light so that it was kind of casting light back out. So I only used one color of sparkles pre wings because I wasn't sure if I wanted to have the sparkles showing through the wings or if uh, sparkles wouldn't show th through wings or, or how how I should do that. So I waited until I put all the green for the wings on before I put on the other colors of sparkles. I ended up putting quite a lot of detail on this uh, upper left corner of her wings because I wanted to experiment with the techniques I learned from the video and kind of figure out how the light from the little thing behind this part of her wing would show through, how that would kind of get, how the light would be bent because of the wing and how it would maybe make the wing even brighter than the, how it would show through the wing even brighter than it was without the wing in between us and it. And so I kind of experimented with that. I'm not sure if I, I don't know what <laughs> what a light would really look like through translucent fabric, I should look into that because I do have translucent fabrics and lights and I should really examine that. But <laughs> I didn't before I did this paint. I'm sure I'll do more with translucent stuff and light and bending it in the future because I'm very impressed and I think it's really pretty. And I'd really like to get better at drawing that kind of thing because uh, it fascinates me. And I really like both lights and fabrics. Fabrics are some of the things I really like the most in paintings and such. So I'm sure I will be doing more videos involving those kinds of things. And uh, <laughs> so we'll see how I grow in the future. But this was... Uh, stretching for me at the time and in the future there will be more stretching and exploring and figuring out so I'm excited about that. Another thing about this illustration is that her her wings are not meant to be uh, <laughs> realistic for flying or living. I don't think she can don't know how if how well she'd be able to walk around with, <laughs> with wings like this or she'd always be flying or uh <laughs> how that would work. If anyone is going to fly with wings with big old holes in them like this and that are made <laughs> of such fragile stuff that's kind of wisping in the wind, um, I, I think it'd be magic flying <laughs> as opposed to actual flying. Uh, yeah, I don't think, yeah, <laughs> there's holes in them. Um, <laughs> but, uh, I just thought it looked so funny. So I did it. Although that's kind of the way uh, it would have to work with most fairies, because most fairies has, have wings that are <laughs> too small to hold them up. Same with Pegasuses, usually. As I've seen them usually illustrated, their wings are too small. Uh, <laughs> so we have to use something like fairy dust, like the Pixies of Pixie Hollow do. I'm not sure what exactly um, makes my fairies in my books uh, fly. Obviously some kind of magic because their wings are, well they're not big enough, they're less big than most birds who are about as big as the abdomen of a person. So they're, yeah, they're not that, yeah, <laughs> like wider probably than arms could then their arms would be when they're stretched out but not very much so they obviously fly by some kind of magic but they also I have them so that their wings get tired when they fly so much that if their wings are too tired they can't fly so it must be some kind of magic based in their wings <laughs> that works that way and also they can't uh, fly if their wings are injured or can't fly very well if their wings are injured so that's another factor. <laughs> I do try to make my magic make sense, but sometimes 
I don't fully figure it out until I'm writing. I'm a bit of a pantser. I tend to figure things out as I write them, at least the first draft, and then kind of make it all work together in the second and so on drafts. Um, <laughs> so, yeah. At some point, I'll probably paint a fairy, paint one of the fairies who's actually from my books, because uh, that would be fun. I haven't ever drawn anyone from this series that I'm working on now. The one that I drew earlier is from another series, so sometime I might show you what my current characters look like. And as you can see, I uh, my camera quietly stopped recording before I started working on her dress, so you didn't get to see how I figured out how her dress was going to look and how I, how I painted it. Uh, so I'll just tell you, um, basically I got a nice, thick, very pigmented pink going that was red pigment mis mixed with white pigment as opposed to just a thin thing of red because I needed it very pigmented at first. And then I wanted to, to have it be slightly less pigmented as it goes down the dress because I wanted the top part of her dress to be opaque and the bottom part of her dress to be translucent. I transitioned while I was making it to from highly pigmented paint at the top to just watering down that same paint um, to use on the lower portion of her dress. I think it transitioned quite well. And then, <laughs> I think this is the part that really adds to how the dress looks and makes it really pop and look like I wanted it to look, adding these lines of sparkles. <laughs> I thought it just, oh, I love it, I love it so much. I really, really am happy with how the sparkles turned out. And if you watched my Valentine's video, you'll know that all this thing, all this I've done was shaking them. <laughs> it took a lot more shaking than that. I did it most off camera um, because it takes so much shaking to get the ink into the tip of these markers. Now that I've done it once for each of them, I, it comes out really easily. But the first time you use them, you have to shake it so much. <laughs> and it's really frustrating. But I did it. And... And once you have them done, they are glorious. There's so much sparkle in each bit of ink. It's just really good. And it sort of paints on. Some markers are kind of the kind that kind of soak into the paper, but this is the kind that goes over top and paints over everything. Very nice. <laughs> so good. And so much sparkles packed into the ink. Highly recommend these markers. I'll put what kind they are in the description. I've named them in one of my haul videos that you can go back and watch. I'll link that too. But uh, I'll put just what it's called in the description because they're really good. They're from Target. And so here is my finished product. I did a little, uh, <laughs> kind of wanted to kind of show you all slow and mysterious and kind of just go over it up close to kind of show you. So that's my ethereal fairy. Hope you like this video. Um, if you want more, you can subscribe. Comment below your favorite art supplies, uh, what you think of fairies with illogically sized wings and other creatures with illogically sized wings. I'll see you in the next video. Bye!